plus a tour of American admission, that Syria is facing extremist terrorism. The Israeli forces of occupation stormed the Dome of the Rock for the first time since 1967. Four dead and more than 400 wounded in clashes in the Egyptian city of Bursaid. Good afternoon, this is News in English from the Syrian Arab Television in Damascus. In an American-European, a new admission, the American Secretary of State John Kerry pointed out that Syria was facing extremist terrorism. In what analysts described as a turning point in American policy, this admission comes within the context of Kerry's visit to the region. He stressed the necessity of dividing and differentiating among groups of Syrian opposition. Yet America could not get rid of the complex of its double standards. For example, America considered al Nusra Front a terrorist organization, but continued to support it with various means. The press office of the Kremlin announced that Russian President Vladimir Putin and his French counterpart Francois Hollande exchanged opinions in a telephone call about cooperation to solve the Syrian crisis. In his statement today, the office pointed out that the telephone followed the recent visit of the French president to Russia. In Moscow last week, President Putin held a joint press conference with his French guest and called upon the international community to prevent the extremist groups from exploiting the tragedy in Syria to achieve their sinister aims. Mr. Putin reaffirmed Russia's attitude to the situation in Syria within the context of commitment to international legitimacy and the rule of law. The British newspaper Sunday Times confirmed that the British armed man Ibrahim al Mazawji was killed in Syria, pointing out that al Mazawji was one of 80 British armed men who went to fight in Syria. The Sunday Times was not the first newspaper to reveal this fact, as the Daily Telegraph had has uncovered before that Ghidan Shamsuddin and Hosefa Sayyid, who have Irish citizenship, were killed in Syria to be followed by terrorists who came from Sweden for the purpose of what's called al-Jihad in Syria. It's worth noting that all these terrorists came to fight in Syria provided by security facilitation from regional and western governments who pushed them to this destiny after they opened gates of their prisons for them. Syrian Arab army units chased terrorist groups near the Grand Mosque and the parliament round about in the countryside of Jobar in Damascus. An official source said that four leaders of terrorist groups were killed in this operation. Units of our armed forces destroyed terrorist groups, their hideouts, weapons and equipment in some farms around the west side of Idlib and along the idlib filon highway and some villages in Jisr Shagur countryside. The Syrian Arab army inflicted heavy casualties on the terrorists in the valley of al and Al-Ahmedi in the area of Muharrat al-Nu'man. Other army units destroyed a storehouse of ammunition and killed and wounded several terrorists in their hideouts in the square of Al-Nirab and other terrorist groups in the farmyards of the villages of Bruma, Kafruhin and Taftanaz. In the town of Abu Zuhur, a unit of our armed forces attacked a terrorist group inflicting heavy casualties among them. Moving to Al-Raqqa, where units of the Syrian Arab army confronted terrorist groups, destroyed convoys of their vehicles and ammunition. The dead terrorists included Abu Abdullah al-Gharib, leader of al-Nusra Front terrorist group in Al-Raqqa, as well as Khalaf al-Mari, field leader of the terrorist group known as Ahrar al-Sham, the free people of the Levant. Also in the southern countryside of Hama, Syrian armed forces restored security and stability to several villages after purging them of mercenary terrorists. The armed forces also captured a rocket factory that the terrorists used to make explosive devices. The armed forces destroyed a terrorist hideout in the town of Sheikh Abdullah and captured large amounts of weapons. Another unit of the Syrian army restored security and stability to the town of Taqsis in Hama in collaboration with the population who played a vital role in uncovering the places where the terrorists planted explosive devices. The branch of the National Union of Syrian Students in India held a seminar of lectures in solidarity with the Syrians 
against world terrorism. Several political figures and representatives of Indian parties and organization, organizations excuse me, joined the seminar. The speakers condemned the terrorist war against Syria at the hands of extremists, mercenaries, and gangs of organized crime, supervised by American Western European Zionist supporters. This war aims at destroying Syria and killing its people, thus repeating the crimes committed against Iraq and Libya under the pretext of democracy and freedom of opinion. The real aim of this war is to destroy Syria as the latest base of resistance and steadfastness against foreign hegemony. The students expressed support for Syria and its army in their effort and sacrifices to protect the steadfast homeland and to restore safety and security. The Popular Palestinian Committee of Solidarity with Syria and its national leadership organized a march in the village of Kufur Yusuf in Galilee in the occupied Palestinian territories under the motto Syria confronting the reactionary imperialist Zionist forces. The committee expressed confidence of Syria's victory and asserted that national dialogue remained the only solution for the crisis in Syria. Israeli police stormed the dome of the rock in the occupied Jerusalem city for the first time since 1967. Palestinian sources said 50 armed policemen took this provocative step of desecration and brought with them a member of the Israeli Knesset. Palestinian worshippers confronted them and defended this holy shrine. Israeli forces of occupation recurrently stormed the course of Al-Aqsa Mosque near the dome of the rock. The public strike spread in Egypt to reach the city of Abu Swir as the opposition pledged to boycott the legislative elections said to be held this month and also to boycott the national dialogue called upon by President Mohamed Morsi. Meanwhile, four people were killed and 420 injured as the clashes were renewed between the demonstrators and police in Borsaid after the Interior Ministry announced it will move those who were arrested in Borsaid Stadium case from the building of the security directorate into the prison of Nutrun Valley. A spokesman for the Egyptian army confirmed that a security forces soldier was killed and an officer in the army was injured in clashes in Borsaid, which witnessed the third week of strike. Cairo also witnessed clashes in El Cornish Neil Street near at Tahrir Square as police used an armored vehicle and fired gas bombs against the demonstrators, injuring five people. Russia's permanent representative at the UN, Vitaly Churkin, said that the crisis in Libya was a preface for more dangerous approach in the African countries, as Mali was the first victim of Libya's repercussions. Churkin said that a new approach appeared in the African continent as a result of the way some members of the international community dealt with the events in Libya. Churkin added that despite the toppling of the Libyan regime, Libya is still suffering from chaos and the flow of weapons, which has negative effects on the large coastal area especially in Mali. And with this, we reach the end of our news. More details on our website, www.syrianonline.sy. And now a look at employment rates in Europe and prices of gold in local markets in our economic news after the break with Nariman. <laughs> 